evening, doctor. My name is Jay Majitia. I have completed my engineering this year. And first of all, uh, this is my first time I've been visiting uh, your open talk. And uh, it was uh, really appreciable, the knowledge of all the scripts you have and the confidence you have and a lot of uh, Muslim supporters which uh, really follow you. Now, my question to you is a bit political. Now, I would like to ask you, doctor, uh, do you advise all the Muslims to follow the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, uh, like example of non-violence Satyagraha, uh, which he fought for us to get an independence from Britishers, uh, as I believe and I respect all the holy books like uh, Quran, Gita, Bible. Apart from that, in today's world, I feel I am more an Indian. So, would you advise Muslims to follow principles of Mahatma Gandhi like non-violence, satyagraha or any of the principles of Mahatma Gandhi? It was asked the question that do I suggest the Muslims to follow the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, then he changed it to any principle of Mahatma Gandhi, that is non-violence and satyagraha. Whichever... Or, or, sorry, sorry to interrupt, doctor. Or any of the principles of Mahatma yeah, I, Gandhi. I, I got a question. Starting, you said the principle, meaning all the principles, then you said any principle, I'll give answer to both. All those principles of Mahatma Gandhi, which match with the Quran, which match with our Creator, Match with the saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've got no objection telling the Muslims, follow it wholesale. For example, the Satyagraha movement of Mahatma Gandhi, non-violence, the Prophet did the same. Not that he copied from Mahatma Gandhi, it is Mahatma Gandhi who copied from the Prophet, which I'll come to it later on. If you see the Makki age of the Prophet, the first approximate 13 years that he spent in Makkah, he told the followers, no violence. Many non-Muslims who accepted Islam, they were fierce warriors. The Prophet said, your jihad is sabr. Sabr means patient. Many Muslims were killed and butchered. The pagan Makkin that time, they targeted the weak Muslims. They tortured them. They killed them. So those who were powerful, they got angry. They said that they killed our brothers, we will take revenge. The Prophet said, your jihad is sabr. See, someone who has the power to fight back. And he fights back, it's good. But someone who has the power to fight back, and the commandment is don't fight back, and then he restrains himself, that is real jihad. Jihad in Arabic means to struggle. It means to strive. So here the Prophet's commandment was non-violence. They went on the streets only saying that we bear witness that there's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the messenger of Allah. People stoned them, they did not retaliate. People abused them, they did not retaliate. The Prophet went to Taif, people stoned him, he didn't retaliate. So this is one of the strategies, but not the only strategy. So do you want to complete the answer? No, sir. Yeah, after, after Dr. Zakir completes your question, we'll allow you to ask. You okay, will have okay. to have some patience, brother. Okay, okay, sir. You have asked a question, I have to give the reply. So this part of Mahatma Gandhi, of non-violence, depending on situation. But now if you tell the Indian government, you know the person is robbing, non-violence, don't arrest him. The person is raping, non-violence, don't arrest him. The Indian government will agree. Every country has a police force. This force is meant to let peace prevail in that country. So sometimes they use force against the criminal to let peace prevail. You can't tell the government, can't tell the police commissioner of Bombay that, see, Mahatma Gandhi said non-violence, so if a person is robbing, let him rob, only do shiksha, but don't rob. Suppose they come and rape your sister, you say, okay, don't rape, don't rape, non-violence. So non-violence is the best. In Islam, there is something like zulm. Zulm, in Arabic, the best translation of zulm can be oppression. And a person who does oppression is called a zalim, zalim person. And who is more zalim than a person who can stop the oppression and does not stop the oppression? The Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, 
that if you see an evil, you stop it with your hand. If you cannot stop it with the hand, then stop it with the tongue. If you cannot stop it with the tongue, then curse in your heart. And if you curse in your heart, you are the lowest level of Mormon, you are the lowest level of Muslim. Suppose you see a rape taking place. Mahatma Gandhi said, oh, don't rape, don't rape. The best is if you have the power to stop, stop it with your hand. She may not be your sister. She may not be your mother. If you see someone raping, if you can stop it with your hand, you stop it with your hand. If you cannot, if you are weak, if you don't have the power, at least say, oh, bhai sahab, rape mat karo, balatkar mat karo. Dear brother, don't rape, at least with your tongue. If you think, if I say with my tongue also, he'll kill me, at least curse in your heart. So depending upon the situation, the strategy keeps on changing. When Prophet went to Medina, there he was peaceful. He did Suleh Hudaybiyah. He signed a contract between the pagan, non-believers and Muslim. They broke the contract. When they come for war, then the Almighty God said, when they come for war, don't get scared, fight. Kill them. So depending upon the situation, and according to the people, historians, Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book of the hundred most influential people in human history. Number one, he gave to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But I'm not mentioning him for that. Among the important misses was Mahatma Gandhi. Michael H. Hart, a famous historian, after mentioning the hundred most influential people in history, he mentioned the important misses. And in that, he mentioned Mahatma Gandhi. And he says, the Satyagra movement of Mahatma Gandhi, which was one of the important movements, which let the Britishers go back. But what he said, even if this movement wasn't there, yet India would have got independence, according to the famous historian, Michael H. Hart. So what we realize, that depending upon the situation, we have to use the strategy. You can't say always non-violence. Sometimes, violence will have to be used to let peace prevail. Like how you have police in every country, in every state. So anyone who goes beyond the limits, who rapes, who robs, who harms other people, that time, as a last resort, like the country says, the police can use force. Similarly, Islam says, as a last resort, as a last alternative, sometimes force can be used to let peace prevail. Hope that answers the question. If I have any other question, you're most welcome, brother. No, sir, I'm convinced with it, and thanks for the That's answer. the reason I said, don't interrupt me. Alhamdulillah. It's my profession. I'm in the field. If I give the complete answer, people are convinced. I start the answer, people want to object. When you're putting your hand up, your mind is going on the question. You aren't paying attention on my answer. So when you listen with an open mind, inshallah, I will answer your question. If not, inshallah, I will give you a second opportunity. Okay, and I would also like to advise all the Muslim people over here. Uh, you have a great scholar like Dr. Naik. So please follow Muslims uh, 100%. As uh, there are some doubts, like people do not follow it 100%. So I hope all the Muslims will uh, follow the Muslim religion 100% and make uh, India proud. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you, brother. brother. I would request that all the Muslims should follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the last and final revelation of the glorious Quran. As far as the brother, he said that Muslims should follow me 100%. I request him that even he should follow me. At least what I speak about the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So, brother, we are waiting for an opportunity. I want you also to follow me. Me, as long as I match with the Quran and Sahih Hadith. If I don't match with Quran and Sahih Hadith, even Dr. Zakir Naik is zero. Zakir Naik has got no value. What I say, if it matches with the last and final commandment, the glorious Quran, and last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you follow me, I request you, even you should follow me, what I speak about the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Yes, sister. The next question. Assalamu alaikum. This is Bhageshri Savan. I'm a non-Muslim. I want to accept Islam in front of everybody because I want all these people to be on my shahada on the day of judgment. Ashadu anna illa illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammadu Rabbullah. 
Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Mashallah, sister. I, I think Dr. Zakir can uh, pronounce it properly and I she can repeat. If I say it and you can pronounce it, you can say, Ashadu Allah ilaha. Ashadu anna ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu anna. Wa ashadu anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu wa rasuluhu. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the servant and messenger of Almighty God. Is, is the servant and messenger of Almighty God. Welcome to the religion of peace. Thank you. Thank you. We find that in this 10 day conference that we have, this 10 day conference, there are many people who accepted Islam, and many questions were asked to several of the speakers, and they were convinced that this is the only solution for humanity, and we appreciate that. Sister, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you Jannah, peace in this world and the next world, inshallah. Any yes, questions, sister? sister you are most welcome to ask. Uh, this non Muslim sister, she does not want to disclose her identity. Welcome. You, without disclosing her identity, she can ask a question. She is a student of MBA. She asks, Why is Allah referred to Allah? Why not any other name? The sister has a question that why is Allah referred to as Allah and why not other names? The reply is given in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, where it's mentioned in the Quran, Qulidullah abidur rahman ayyamatadu fala al asman husna Say call upon him by Allah or call upon him by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belong the most beautiful names. You can call Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by any name, but it should be a pure name. It should be a correct name. It should be a name given by himself. And there are no less than 99 attributes given in the glory of Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Kareem, Al-Hakim, most merciful, most compassionate, most wise, no less than 99. And the crowning one is Allah. And this message that to Allah belongs the most beautiful names, besides Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 110, it's also repeated in Surah Taha chapter number 20 verse number 8, and Surah Araf chapter number 7 verse number 180, and Surah Al-Hashar chapter 59 verse number 24 where Allah says that to Him belongs the most beautiful name. But the crowning name is Allah. Now why do we Muslims prefer calling Allah by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God? The reason is sister, all the other names and words, they can be played around with. For example, the English word God, if you add S to God, it becomes God's plural of God. There's nothing like plural Allah. Kul hu Allah ahad. Say is Allah one and only. If you add D-E-S-S to God, it becomes Goddess, a female God. In Islam, there's nothing like male Allah or female Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got no gender. If you add father to God, it becomes Godfather. He's my Godfather. He's my guardian. There's nothing like Allah Abba or Allah Father in Islam. If you add a mother to God, it becomes Godmother. There's nothing like Allah Mother or Allah Ami in Islam. If you prefix tin before God, it becomes tin God, meaning a fake God. There's nothing like tin Allah in Islam. That's the reason we Muslims, we prefer calling Allah by the Arabic word Allah. And that's the reason this word Allah is also present in most of the major religious scriptures. If you read the six scriptures, one of the attributes given to Almighty God is Allah. If you read the Christian Bible, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse 34, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 46, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was put on the cross, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Oh God, oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Does Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani sound like, oh God, oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? No. But if you translate into Arabic, it says, Allah, Allah, lama sabachthani. Similar. So Hebrew and Arabic, they are sister languages. And if you read the Scofield Dictionary, it pronounces Allah also, Eli also is Allah, A-L-A-H. Same. So Allah is even mentioned in the Bible, even in the Hindu scriptures. 
it's mentioned in the Vedas. There's a separate Upanishad by the name of Allah Upanishad. So this word Allah is also mentioned by name in the major world religious scriptures. This is the proper name of the true Almighty God. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. I Dr. Balavant Shastri. बिहार प्रवासी संघ के मैं राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हूं और बम्बे में बहुत दिन से रह रहा हूं आज भी हाशमी आजमी साहब भी हम लोगों के पहचानते हैं कई बार मुलाकात करते हैं आपके अंतरराष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन में आने के सौभाग्य प्राप्त हुआ इसके लिए सभी भाइयों को मेरा तरफ से नमस्कार शुक्रिया मैं एक चीज बहुत उत्सुकता बस मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि हिंदू फिलॉसफी के अंदर में वसुधै व कुटुम्बकम वसुधै व कुटुम्बकम पूरा पृथ्वी मेरा कुटुंब है परिवार है ऐसा हिंदू फिलॉसफी में कहा है और सर्वे भवंतु सुखी ना सर्वे संतु निरामया मतलब सब सुखी हो सब आनंदित रहे और सब अपने रोजी रोटी कमाते हुए खूब आनंद से रहे यह संदेश हमारे हिंदू फिलॉसफी में दिया है मेरे ख्याल से आपके फिलॉसफी में भी आपके दर्शन शास्त्र में भी इसी तरह के संदेश होगा और इस संदेश को आप लोगों ने समय समय से प्रचार भी किया है लेकिन एक आश्चर्य के साथ में और उत्सुकता बस मैं आपको इंगित करके कहना चाहता हूं कि या तो आप लोगों ने कुरान के सही माने को सही तरीका से विश्व लेवल में रखे नहीं या कुरान के संदेश को यदि आप रखे तो समझने वाला कितना समझा दूसरी बात यह है कि आज पूरे विश्व के अंदर में जितनी प्रतिष्ठा की नजर से कुरान और इस्लाम को जो पहले देखा जाता था कुछ वर्षों से उसमें कमी आई है जैसे कट्टरपंथी चरमपंथी आतंकवाद और कहीं ना कहीं तो मैं क्या समझूं? या आपके प्रस्ताव रखने में गलती हुई है या कुरान के सही संदेश पहुंचाया नहीं गया या हम इस संदेश में पड़े हुए हैं कि जो इतना बड़ा कुरान जो भाईचारा के संदेश फैला रहा है चारों तरफ शांति का पैगाम देना चाहता है वह आज विश्व लेवल में और उसकी छवि क्या है धन्यवाद वेरी गुड इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन हिंदू फिलोसफी वी बिलीव दैट द फुल वर्ल्ड द होल ह्यूमैनिटी इज लाइक अ फैमिली एंड एवरी वन शुड लिव हैपी इन दैमिली अर्न मनी लिव हैपीली एंजॉय लाइफ That was his question. Is it similar in Islam? And he says, surely in Islam it will be somewhat similar. And then he comes to his question and asks that this Quran it should reach the full world. Is there a mistake in the Muslims explaining the Quran, or is there a mistake in the people understanding it? That today we find Muslims are being labelled as terrorists, as fundamentalists, as extremists. So what is the real problem? As far as the first question, I do agree with him that Hinduism does say that the whole world is a family. We should live happily, earn, enjoy. Islam says somewhat similar, except for the ending. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat, chapter number forty-nine, verse number thirteen: "Ya ayu an nasu inna khalqna kum min zakin wa unsa wa jalna kum shuba wa kaba ila litaarfu inna kramu kum in the Lord ka kum inna Allah alimun khabir." Oh, human kind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female, and have divided you into nations and tribes, so that you may recognize each other, not that you may despise each other. So the Quran says that all the human kind has got one common grand, 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 great, 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 grand, grand, grand grandparents, Adam and Eve. May Allah be pleased with them both. And Allah has divided us into nations and tribes, different colors, different languages, so that you may recognize each other. and the criteria for judgment in the sight of almighty god it's not wealth it's not caste it's not color it's not sex but it is taqwa and god almighty said most honored 
in the same verse of Surah Jura, chapter 14, verse 13, Allah continues and says, and the most honored amongst you is the person who has taqwa. In Hinduism, he said that we have to lead a life happily, earn. In Islam, we have to lead your life happily, yes, but on the basis of taqwa. The only criteria in which makes you superior, it is taqwa, it is righteousness, it is God consciousness. It's not money, it's not wealth, it's not sex, it's not caste. Now coming to his question, that the Quran is such a good book, is it that there's problem in communication regarding the preachings of Quran, or are we not able to understand? That's the reason, brother, we're having this talk. Islam, the solution to humanity. The problem is in media portraying Islam. And we Muslims, it's our fault. I do agree with you. We aren't expert in media. We Muslims are to blame. As it is the duty of every Muslim to convey the message of Islam, to convey the message of the Quran to the whole of humanity. We aren't doing a full job. We are trying. We are trying a level best. Today, the best way you can reach the masses. Now, see the gathering. Surely hundreds of thousands, I don't know how many. But yet, for us, it is retail. 100,000 is retail for me. We believe in millions. Therefore, we are showing live on the satellite channel. And there's estimated viewership of more than 60 million people watching. 60 million. The 100,000, 200,000 is peanuts. I can give shahada to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have delivered the message to humankind. And 60 million is at least 1%. Yet it is nothing. 1% of humankind, if you count it to be 6 billion. What we want that we Muslims should be more forward in media. There should be more channels. It should spread much more. And I do agree with you, there is a problem in understanding. That's the reason, as you mentioned, that we are being labeled as extremists, as fundamentalists, as terrorists. And my talk was based on that, that how should you reply when a person says that you are a fundamentalist, you are a terrorist, you are extremist. So hopefully, inshallah, you'll get the translation after this lecture. Hopefully. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes. Is there a brother, non-Muslim there? Yes, brother. Uh, sir, my name is Gil Roy from Bombay. I'm a businessman. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I really enjoyed today. It's my first time. And my question is about conversions into and out of uh, Islam. Now, many Muslim countries do not permit conversion out of Islam. Some even use the sword and they have death penalty. But correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know of any non-Muslim majority country which prohibits people from converting into Islam. Now, what, what is the right thing in Islam? Because as you say, you know, you don't need the sword for Islam and uh, thousands and millions of followers will anyway get into Islam. Then why, if someone wants to convert out those countries, are they right? I mean, why can't they allow people and see for themselves if someone wants to convert out of Islam? For example, if America today, which is largely Christian, more than uh, majority Christian, if they would prohibit conversions, how, say conversions into Islam, then what would be your response? The brother asked a very good question and a very important question. This question has got two parts. The first part is that why don't some of the Muslim countries allow conversion or allow propagation? They don't allow the propagation to take place. They don't allow conversion from anyone to convert Muslim to a non-Muslim. Basic question, whether it be anyone. And secondly, what about the death penalty for conversion? What if America today does not allow propagation, does not allow conversion? What will be your state? Very good question. Brother, as far as the propagation is concerned, there are countries, for example, Saudi Arabia, we does not allow propagation, the only country which I know very well, which does not allow propagation, it is Saudi Arabia. And the reason is that suppose, brother, you want to start a school. If you want to start a school, you are taking an interview of a match teacher. So when you take the interview of the match teacher, you ask the question, 2 plus 3 is equal to how much? So one match teacher says, 
2 plus 2 is equal to 3. The second math teacher says 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. The third math teacher says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now many people say, what's the problem? Let them preach any religion. Whoever wants to accept, let them accept. I will ask you a question. Will you allow a math teacher in your school to teach 2 plus 2 is equal to 3? Will you select the maths teacher who says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5? You'll say, no, I know maths. I'm definite about it. In maths, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and nothing else. So as far as religion is concerned, Saudi Arabia is very confirmed. It agrees with the verse of the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19. In Nadina in the law Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is peace acquired by submitting evil to Almighty God. They will not allow anyone else to preach anything wrong. But in science and technology, they say to the Americans, Ahlan was Ahlan. You're most welcome. They get people from England. They get people from India. No problem. In science and technology, they're not number one. So in science and technology, they have people coming from America, from England, from Singapore, from Philippines, from India, from all over the world. But as far as Dean is concerned, they are cocksure. They hundred percent sure this is right. Same as you are cocksure that two plus two is equal to four, you will not allow any wrong teaching. Same way, I agree with that. I am a student of comparative religion, brother. There is no religious scripture on the face of the earth besides the Quran, which says that this is the only true religion. You read the scriptures of the Hindus. You read the scripture of the Christians, the Bible. Nowhere does the Bible say that Christianity is right. The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. Do you know that? The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. The word Hindu doesn't exist in the Vedas. Do you know that? Nowhere does the Vedas say that this is the only right religion. Nowhere does the Bible say that this is the only right religion. So Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth where Almighty God says emphatically, in Nadina in the Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. So as far as preaching, propagating and religion is concerned I'm sure that if you know what is confirmed they will not allow anyone else to preach something which is wrong this India it's a secular country it's not a Hindu country it's in the Constitution of the people for the people by the people I'm an Indian geographically I'm a Hindu because I'm an Indian but practicing Muslim I'm a practicing Muslim it's my birthright in this country to preach propagate and practice this religion that is what is in the Constitution. So you have to change your Constitution. What we realize that America is a democratic country. It's mentioned in the Constitution about freedom of speech. So what we realize, brother, that if you say that what if they don't allow propagation? What if they don't? How will I feel? It is not mentioned in the Christian scriptures. So I will say they are not following their Christianity. They're not following the Bible. Even if you agree this is a Hindu country, which is not. It's a secular country. Nowhere it is mentioned. You being a Christian. I wanted to point out one statement from the Bible which says that Christianity is the only right religion. <laughs>